representative norton as former head of the e e o c is this a setback for women oh karen this case is a sad back for women it's a sad back for people of color it is a set back for ordinary americans for whom the law and its legal remedies have no meaning without class actions i'm going to have to disagree and say i think this isn't a step back this is a step forward and reigning frankly reigning in an out of control judiciary uh... and legal system that and that ultimately will benefit and women Okay. This is definitely a setback for women uh, who are regularly uh, discriminated against in the workplace and also are discriminated against in the legal system. But um, I also agree it's a huge setback for the class action suit, which takes care of the everyday individual that can't afford to bring a suit by themselves. Absolutely not. I think what this does is it reaffirms the definition of the rules of civil procedure concerning what constitutes a class and a class action suit. It does not take away the ability for individuals to sue or even for a class action suit to take place. It just simply reaffirms the definition so that it's not as broadly interpreted as some wanted. Well, we have a 50-50 split right here <laughs> on our own Supreme Court. Uh, do you, any of you agree with Justice Ginsburg when she talks about the corporate culture of Walmart as being suffused with gender bias? I mean, it got 70% women employees and a very small percentage of them in management. Well, beyond that, this, this case has discrimination no matter how you look at it. Women earning uh, uh, more than a dollar, uh, less than a dollar uh, when compared with men a disparity of, of, of a dollar or so when compared with men doing the same job. Uh, you've got a centralized personnel system, but one that said you in the field have absolute discretion about who to hire. There, the, what, did, what did Scalia say was the policy? The policy was what we, we now require every employer to put up on his wall you must not discriminate right. that was the policy right. yeah but in this case the problem is you had w three women representing 1.5 million other employees former and current employees and the problem with that is that they had different stories different stores in different locations different managers you there was no way and what Scalia said in his, his opinion was there there was no way yeah. that you would be able to under the the rules of, of evidence what you need to prove this be able totally to do so. you were always going to have that in the exactly. class action suit. Exactly. You were always going to have cultural differences, um, geological, I'm sorry, geographical differences. You were always going to have that. The problem here is it preempted getting to the heart of the case before you could even find if they had common causes, common um, actions against Walmart, what happened to them. It was pretty much summarily dismissed. But, and that's the but why, don't, why can't people bring these cases on their own? If you truly that's have a strong case, first of all, do you know how expensive well, let me, let me it is to bring a well, case on your but own if you have a strong against case, a corporation? I understand, but if you have a strong case, there's plenty of attorneys out there who have no, to go there after isn't. a place like there that. Isn't. I practice law, no, well, a case listen. against Walmart would have buried me. No, what? They would have buried me in paperwork. There's no way. The, the, the that, that, is, I just don't think that's The reason for class actions is not the reason for class actions is we always require people, of course, to put up the money for us for a suit uh, in this in this country we have we have a, a, a situation where and you can however get a lawyer if you agree to pay him or allow him to take the risk and then he gets a certain percentage right, in these of type the of cases you but always assume he's not the going to take that case that's right on an individual basis because it is not worth his while on it's a too much of case. a risk. You can lose your whole practice over a case like the, that. The evidence was insufficient, Moving and that's why that, they ruled I against I wanted them. to talk about the two plaintiffs. They have both said, Christine uh, Krapowski and Betty Dukes, have vowed to continue Carry the on. fight individually. Uh, do you think that they will have, I mean, you all argue that you don't need a class action suit in this particular instance. Do you think they'll be more effective? Well, I didn't say they didn't need it. I just said that under the law, and there's all kinds of technicalities and, you know, within the laws, and sometimes what t seems to us on the surface as being pretty cut and dry, um, is there a, a gender bias in Walmart's corporate culture? Perhaps. But that wasn't the question on the table, uh, necessarily. There were several, and you have to establish certain, certain things within the rules of civil procedure for, to constitute a class action, and they felt that that evidence wasn't sufficient. It, so it doesn't take away from the question, it's just the way you litigate well, it, it takes has away to from be the different. The qu question well, is you can't even get to it. Thank yeah, you. And, and <laughs> let me just talk about on, on Walmart's side for a moment. Will the cost of you know, litigating individual suits, will that be worse for Walmart or better? Better.
Why is that? Well, absolutely better because um, you can just bury an individual routinely and send the same type of paperwork to make them try and discover the one thing that they've asked for. So it's so much better. Also, it's going to cut down on your ability to be sued in this case. You will not be able to have an attorney say yes with this. The, maybe it's a small amount of money you're going to get for the individual. Maybe it's only $20,000 in back pay, which is a lot for the individual, but that's not enough will to this, be able to take on a corporation. Will this decision pr protect other big companies from class action suits? Uh, let me hear from this side. Well, no, I, d I do think this, this, this draws a line in the sand, and I think that's what you saw happening here with the court. I mean, frankly, as I said at the top of the show, you've got these lawsuits are out of control, mm -hmm. both at the individual level in many cases, but also at the class action level. And it's one thing, I can agree with you that yes, it's very difficult for one individual to come up against an entire company the size of Walmart. But to come up and say 1.5 million female employees now need back pay and need damages when 1.5 million female employees did not raise their hand and say, I want to be a part of this necessarily, I was discriminated against. I mean, that is crossing the line. Well, look, the whole court and, agreed and with you on that. Yes. The whole court agreed with you That's on right. that. But, but what the court said was, uh, these people should be able to, 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 the court should look at another rule right there, which is part of the same rule, rather than to throw the whole case out. This is a, this is right. a court that is called the corporate court for a reason. Mm -hmm. It has sided time and again uh, with corporations over the little guy. And when you ask, Karen, uh, whether this will affect people outside of discrimination cases, a class action is a class action. Many of them have to do with consumer rights. Uh, they have to do with rights all across the board. This affects, that's what I mean by ordinary Americans, right. this affects uh, every litigant who can't buy him, who can only get a remedy if he joins with other doesn't litigants. With the group, so. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't outlaw class actions. It just requires that you maintain what a class The higher level that's is right. You've got to bring the higher level of There are ways of getting things. There are ways of getting things. What's wrong with having much. a higher level? That's right. I think we're going to I think this is a lower level. To disagree. As they say, it's to the contrary here. <laughs> from American women writers, uh, workers, excuse me, from American women workers to Afghan women's rights. President Obama's plan to withdraw troops from Afghanistan has Afghan women wondering what impact it will have on their rights. Afghanistan continues to be named the worst country in the world in which to be a woman, according to Thomson Reuters. Many women are concerned the Taliban could return to power. Others believe peace talks will give them a voice to protect their own rights. Women's rights groups in Afghanistan are fighting to be heard and to have a seat at the table when the peace talks begin. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton told Afghan women, quote, we will not abandon you, unquote. And Congresswoman Kathy McMorris Rogers and Donna Edwards launched the Afghan Women's Task Force this week to foster discussion about women's rights in the country. What impact uh, does the United States have on women's rights in, in Afghanistan? And what responsibility do we as American women have? Well, I think we as a country have a lot of responsibility to the people of Afghanistan and being that we're there. And I don't know how Secretary of State Hillary Clinton can say, we will not abandon you, because that, frankly, is about to be what we're going to do to the whole country, not just the women there, the whole country by this pullout of troops. And I don't think there's any doubt that if I was a woman in Afghanistan, I'd be very concerned right now with what a President Obama announced earlier this week. Well, there's a few things going on here. One, um, I don't know necessarily that at this point, after being in Afghanistan for 10 years, that we are going to our presence there is actually uh, going to make a difference in a tribal culture that for centuries has been a certain way. This is something you're looking, you're looking to change a culture that will take centuries to change. And the people and the, and the gains that women have made there are very minimal. They are limited to within Kabul, the major cities, and it's only a very small percentage of the elites there. This has nothing to, it's still the oppression and all of the draconian things that we as Western women look at as being, uh, you know, awful circumstances for women still exist in these tribes. W are we going to keep our troops there for this entire, you know, is this worth American blood to keep shedding? I don't think so. It's been a trillion dollars almost we spent there, and we really need to think about this. Is this really what no. America's and role should hear, be in troops? Here, here, the here, troops. I think, where the American people are coming.